And he took just one, stretched it, and then began to blow it up. And then I think he made a bad joke about making a balloon animal and said, look, it's a fat poodle. <laughs> but I'll spare you the joke, because I don't do balloon animals. <laughs> and uh, it was at this moment, I thought, well, what is he going to do with a balloon? And then he introduced something that made me a little scared. It's what I call a balloon's worst nightmare. <laughs> and just like some of you guys, I was at the front row, and I was a little nervous. Like, I don't think this is going to go so late. It's going to just remain. You can weigh whatever wand you want, but that is not going to go well. And he said, hey, if you have something in life that seems impossible, try looking at it from a different direction. And he said, as a magician, I've learned to look at things different ways, and sometimes the impossible is really possible. At this point, I leaned forward in my seat, even though I was a little nervous, I wanted to see what he was going to do. And I was amazed. As the magician began to put that needle, right through. That balloon didn't pop at all. And just when I started to doubt what I was really seeing, he pulled it all the way through. And he said, I want you guys to encourage, to believe in your dreams, because sometimes the impossible is really possible. old and I said, I want to do that. <laughs> but my mom didn't want me to run around with uh, a needle at age six for obvious reasons. In fact, she's here tonight, she still gets nervous about this trip. <laughs> Which makes the next one even more. <laughs> Something that'll really boost her anxiety that much more. But in that moment, there was that little spark, there was that little sense of magic. Or I said, I want to do that. I want to be a part of something like that. I don't know what your spark is in the room tonight, I don't know what your passion is, but all I can say is when you have that dream, when you have that moment, when you have that thought, when you have that idea, chase it. Because sometimes you'll be really surprised where it takes you. And I, you know, what you're going to see tonight, it's all tricks, illusions, we don't have any special powers or anything like that. That would be super cool. But we're, we're not quite that talented. <laughs> But you're going to see a bunch of folks that have practiced for years and years to make sure that their hands are quicker than your eyes. But I think where the real magic lies is when you have that moment of wonder, that moment of excitement that you can share with someone else. And so, whatever that dream is for you, don't stop chasing it. I want to show you guys something a little special. Something a little dangerous. You guys want to see something a little more dangerous than this? Oh, this is going to be awesome. This is a... Uh, Something that uh, we've held dear for a very long time. I actually work my, uh, what I do full time is not magic, this is just a hobby for me. But I actually travel to middle and high schools across the country and teach young people how to overcome bullying. See, 160,000 kids skip school every single day. It's one in six for fear of being bullied. Of those brave enough to go through school, most of them will see bullying have a great foot rising. There's so many kids, they don't know how to escape that. They think that. It's impossible to escape it. Some people even give up. But I have the pleasure of teaching kids, equipping them with social and emotional coping skills to teach them how to face adversity and solve their own social problems. It's something really rewarding. I've got to share that with over one million students so far. If that's something that you're going through, either you as a student or you as a parent, I'd love to invite you to check out my website. It's lovechangesatall.com. You'll get some great free resources that you can use there, some videos that'll teach you exactly how to make that craziness, that bullying stop, and be stronger than ever. So can I show you something a little crazy? Cool, can we have the house lights up for a second? Oh, uh, this is gonna be fun. So I designed this, uh, this illusion, this escape, it's actually not an illusion, it's a stunt, it can go wrong, so we have uh, my lovely assistant Leslie standing by. I had two, uh, two young ladies that helped examine these bags uh, before the show started tonight, and uh, we're gonna have them uh, check those out here and talk to them a little bit on stage. And the other thing I need is a handheld microphone to work with these ladies because I'm going to get searched and stripped of all the metal that's currently connected to my head. How's it going? I'm Jeff. What's your name? Natalie. Natalie, good to meet you. Paige, awesome. Paige and Natalie, cool. Well, if this doesn't work out, she's going to need a new assistant, so watch closely, okay? Yeah, that'll be great. 
we got a show tomorrow, so good luck. <laughs> no, it's cool. I'm going to take this uh, jacket off because uh, in a second this is going to get a little crazy. I share with you one of my dreams was to do illusions, but not to share with you one of my nightmares. It uh, goes around kind of the issue of bullying and how it affected me in my life. And so ladies, in just a second, I'm going to have you examine all of these crazy items. But first, go over here to the bags, if you would, Natalie Page. Now, did you uh, search these thoroughly before the show? Yes. Yes. <laughs> They're in unison. I like it. <laughs> Already going on the road. And uh, was there anything inside? No. No. Nothing at all. Okay, no holes, trap doors, mirrors, nothing like that. Hold the music for me. And um, anything also, uh, tell me this, was there anything up her sleeves? Well, she has no sleeves. She has no sleeves. I guess it kind of explains itself. <laughs> All right, awesome. So cool. Ladies, uh, you can go ahead and kick the music on. Here we go. This is what we call suffocation. Come on over here, ladies. I'm going to have you examine all these items from left to right. So you can make sure that this uh, neck iron doesn't pull apart in any way. Make sure that these handcuffs, once they're fastened, that they don't ratchet back in the other direction. Thumb cuffs work the same way. They're just for your thumb, because any hand, make sure they don't go in the other direction. You can bend the steel bar, make sure that the bend doesn't break. You can check the locks as well, just make sure that you unlock them when you're done to make it nice and easy for Leslie to lock me in. All right, y'all. We all have things in life to try to hold us back, make us stop, make us quit. In just a second, you're going to see a few of mine. I want to challenge you to try to hold your breath with me to see if you can. Good luck. This is what we call suffocation. What you are about to see is a real escape stunt with real danger, performed by a trained professional. This stunt should not be attempted at any time by anyone, anywhere. To ensure that Jeff has no keys or lockpicks on his body, he will now be searched by a metal detector. Jeff will also be secured by two devices used on prisoners that have had a history of attempting escape. Jeff is now getting in place and preparing for his assistant to apply the shackles. To prove that they are real, he's invited audience members on stage to inspect each device. These volunteers have also examined the two bags that Jeff will be locked in to ensure that there are no secret openings or keys hidden inside. The first restraint is a neck iron. The purpose of this device is to limit movement by chaining handcuffs to the neck and away from the body. The second device is a pair of regulation police handcuffs, the same kind that police officers use on the street to secure dangerous criminals. Up next is a device that is not as common, but has been used for years on prisoners who attempt to escape. These regulation thumb cuffs secure the thumbs together and restrict their movement, making it nearly impossible to do anything with the hands, even if the prisoner had access to a lock-picking device of some kind. Jeff's assistant is now attaching his handcuffs to the neck iron with a padlock. This will severely limit Jeff's mobility and make it much more difficult for him to escape. In addition to escaping metal shackles, Jeff will also have to free himself from two bags. The white bag that Jeff is currently being locked in is a federal mail bag as used by the United States Postal Service. This high security bag is made of tough canvas and has 18 holes at the top reinforced with brass grommets. Jeff's assistant will thread a steel bar through these holes to close the bag. Once the bar is in place, a high security padlock will be placed through each end, locking the bag shut. In 1907, legendary escape artist Harry Houdini was challenged by the United States Postal Service to escape a mailbag like Jeff's. Houdini was successful, but it took him over an hour to free himself. Unfortunately for Jeff, he would not have that much time or that much air. The black bag you see on stage is an industrial garbage bag. Once it's tied shut, Jeff will have two short minutes to escape before his oxygen runs out. 
After that, he'll reach the point of suffocation. The timer is set for two minutes, and the countdown starts now. Please remember that what you are seeing is not a trick or an illusion. All of Jeff's restraints are real, and so is the danger. Do not try this stunt or anything similar at home. One minute and 30 seconds remain. Even though Jeff is a trained professional, a stunt like this carries a big risk. Jeff's assistant is a trained member of his safety crew and is monitoring his every move. If Jeff gets the signal that he can't breathe, his assistant will only have a few seconds to pull him out. One minute. At this point, the air inside the bag is getting very hot and very thin. In order to avoid passing out, Jeff will have to slow down his breathing. Jeff's time is running out. 30 seconds. Join me in counting down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Jeff Healy. We are Dynamite Magic. Enjoy the rest of the evening, y'all.